And it's been a long 15 months since the lockdowns first started in the Bay Area. Yeah, no kidding. Today, as we've been talking about all day long, is when the new phase of the pandemic begins. We can start dropping some of these mandates. But uh, Crown Force Noelle Bella actually did something interesting. She took a look back at all that we've endured since March of 2020 when the lockdown began. No more masks, no more social distancing, and no more capacity limits. The removal of nearly all pandemic-related restrictions here in California has been a long time coming. Everyone in San Francisco is ordered to stay home. March 16th, 2020 was the day six Bay Area counties took drastic measures to try and contain the coronavirus. Here at Cron 4, social distancing had begun as we separated our anchors on set and moved our team to report from home. Full on shelter in place. Bars and gyms, movie theaters and restaurant doors were shuttered as millions across the country were ordered to shelter in place. We can't do this without the young people cooperating. Please cooperate. Originally, that order was supposed to be lifted on April 7th, 2020, but that date came and went and we stayed put. Our schools remained closed and the state superintendent made a plea to companies for help with distance learning. Anyone can donate a device or make a contribution to donate a device. Fast forward to June 15th, 2020, three months after shelter in place was ordered and the state was operating in numerical phases for reopening. Counties in phase two allowed restaurants to open up outdoor dining and retail stores and malls began welcoming back shoppers with masks and safety guidelines in place. Today is the first day that we can actually walk into a retail establishment and actually shop. Woo! But the optimism was short-lived. We have to get this virus under control right now. The July 4th holiday saw a record number of travelers and people began gathering indoors without masks. By mid-July, a spike in cases forced retail stores in San Francisco to close back down as the county was added to the state's watch list due to an uptick in hospitalizations. We reserve the option to go further than the state in closing additional businesses and activities. By mid-August, COVID case numbers were declining again, but students had to resume remote learning. Hair salons and barbershops across the Bay Area, though, did reopen for outdoor services. And by the end of the month, the state moved to a new color-coded framework for reopening. Counties are going to be slow moving through this. Counties had to stay in each tier for at least three weeks before they were allowed to advance. By late October, the Bay Area had become familiar with outdoor dining parklets, but just as counties were gearing up to reopen further, we are starting to see a slight uptick in the number of hospitalizations. The U.S. daily average of positive cases rose to 74,000, and cautious counties like San Francisco put a pause on reopening plans. By Thanksgiving, health officials worried holiday travel would trigger a new surge of cases, and that's exactly what happened. Parts of the Bay Area are under that stay-at-home order. By December 7th, it felt like we went back to the beginning again as another statewide stay-at-home order was issued. Places like Santa Clara, San Francisco, Marin, and Alameda counties were beginning to run out of ICU beds. Restaurant operations were shuttered yet again as a new variant from the UK began to present itself here in America. But a light at the end of the tunnel would soon emerge. John Muir Health is expecting almost 5,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine. By December 11th, the FDA issued its first emergency use authorization for a vaccine to combat COVID-19. And vials filled with Pfizer's mRNA vaccine were being shipped across the country. Moderna's emergency use authorization was granted just a week later. And healthcare workers and our most vulnerable population would be the first in line to receive their vaccines. I really encourage you all to take Take it. By mid-January, drive through vaccination clinics were popping up all over the Bay Area. And by February 1st, then brand new President Joe Biden and the CDC ordered mask wearing to be mandatory on all public transportation. The order came at a time when vaccine supply shortages began gripping the Golden State. We need more Moderna vaccine, more Pfizer vaccine. We need to get the federal approval of the J&J &J vaccine. By March, Johnson & Johnson vaccine doses were on the way. Restaurants were reopening for in-person dining and the governor was ordering schools to reopen as well. Two billion dollars of that 6.6 .6 billion dollars grants 
to incentivize these schools. On the year anniversary of the Bay Area shelter in place order, Mayor London Breed received her first COVID-19 vaccine dose. And as the month moved on, vaccine eligibility continued to expand, eventually allowing four Bay Area residents 16 and up to receive their doses. We suffered a little bit of whiplash and we're just so glad to be out of that. Places like Fairyland and Oakland started welcoming back visitors. And as positivity rates dropped dramatically, counties began relaxing mask mandates for outdoor activities. Vaccine eligibility was expanded to more school-aged kids, and the number of people protected against COVID-19 continued to rise. The bottom line is we'll go back to most broad strokes, a semblance of normalcy. Outdoor masking, if we reach that threshold where we hope to be, uh, will be substantially uh, in fact, will be eliminated. By May, Governor Newsom set the tone, announcing vaccinated Californians could ditch their masks by June 15th. And on Friday, June 11th, he signed an executive order to end most pandemic-era restrictions by that date. In San Francisco, Noel Bello, Cron 4 News.